Hello, my name is Jim Keller. I'm a professor of pharmacy, medicine, and oncology at the University of Texas at Austin and the Health Science Center in San Antonio, Texas. Today we're going to talk about antimetic agents for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, also referred to as CINV. So let's get a little historical perspective here. Back in the 70s and 80s, and actually into the early 80s, all we had was high-dose metoclopramide. It wasn't until the 1990s when the 5-HT receptor antagonists hit the market. With the launch of those agents and the use and abuse of those agents, many professional organizations created guidelines for use to try and help practitioners better understand how to administer these new agents, uh, the 5-HT3 receptor antagonists. In the 2000s, we saw the entrance of a new 5-HT3 called a second generation 5-HT3, and also an NK1 antagonist. This was an all new class at the time, and they came out in the early 2000s. This also caused updates in all the available guidelines. MASK at this time initiated an international consensus conference in an attempt to create a single template to be used internationally by countries, which in fact has occurred up to uh, up to this time. So let's take a look at this next slide and we'll do a timeline here of all the agents as they developed uh, from the early 90s. As I said, prior to 1990, there was high dose metoclopramide. It worked in 30, 35, 40 percent of patients at best, and we still had problems. Most patients who received highly emetogenic chemotherapy got sick. In 1990, we had the first 5-HT3 antagonist on Dancitron come to market. Shortly after that, we had Granisetron. Dolacetron followed that. Those are considered, the in the U.S. market, the first three first-generation trons, as we call them. Uh, we also had a solution for Granisetron. And in early 2000, we had the first NK1 receptor antagonist for delayed nausea and vomiting, a Prepartin come to market. Uh, we had the first second-generation 5-HT3, palonosetron, that also not only had acute coverage, acute nausea and vomiting, it also got approved for delayed nausea and vomiting. We also had shortly after that, five years after that, the IV formulation of a preparatent. A preparatent is an oral agent. Phosphoprepartent is a prodrug, so it can be given by injection. In 2011, the FDA came out with some cardiovascular warnings on the trons as a class. The last tron was withdrawn from the market. Doses of ondansetron were, were reduced to try and prevent the potential for these cardiac events. And then shortly after that, we had an array of other agents come to market now leading into the 2000s where we're at today. We had combinations of a NK1 and 5-HT3, NEPA approved. We have additional NK1s, Rolapitin. And we also have additional uh, agents, Granisetron, in different delivery forms, extended release patches and extended release sub-Q injections. So to date, we now have an armamentarium of multiple 5-HT3 agents. Uh, multiple NK1 agents, and also multiple delivery and administration routes of agents for us to select from. These next couple slides are just going to run through the agents by group and show you the routes and doses. I'm not going to go through all these, but I'll highlight some of these. Again, as I mentioned, the original agents in the U.S. on Dancitron, Granisetron, and Dolacitron are listed here. Uh, they're available in multiple routes, and you can see the doses to the right that can be administered. The bottom agent is palinocetron I mentioned. That agent, again, is considered the second generation because it has delayed activity. And you can see the doses here. The oral agent is available, as I mentioned, in combination in the U.S., and that's in the combination called NEPA. The next slide shows you the available NK1 receptor antagonists. Again, these are the agents uh, that are specifically related for delayed nausea and vomiting. The first one on the market was a preparatent, the oral form. The IV form is phosphoprepatent. 
We have the newer agent now called Rolopitent that's available, and the combination of Nutupitent and Palinocitron, term NEPA, is also available. The last two are available as oral dosage forms. Other agents that patients can get, we still have historically these dopamine antagonists, compazine, porcoriperazine, metoclopramide, haloperidol, the antipsychotic agent, olanzapine, is, is relatively commonly used as either backup or primary therapy as a for delayed nausea and vomiting. It shows to have pretty good uh, activity there. Additional agents that have been used historically as adjuvants for chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting, the, the cannabinoids, dronabinol, nabilone, antihistamines, corticosteroid, dexamethasone is a primary agent that's built as one of the building blocks in the two and three drug regimens of 5-HT3, corticosteroid, and NK1 antagonist. Dexamethasone is, is a building block in the two and three drug regimen. And then also you can see the benzodiazepam, lorazepam, is used for patients that are agitated that you want to settle down. It's also an adjuvant drug. Formulation is important, as I mentioned. We have different routes now and different formulations. Again, a lot of times anti-medication in a, either a pill or a tablet form are, are commonly prescribed. Also, the injectable form. There can be a reluctance on pill burden. Head and neck cancer patients many times cannot swallow pills, so always looking for alternative routes of administration are important in a lot of cancer patients because they cannot take orally or they're not able to get an injection because of clinic visits and such. So certainly having other routes of administration, either by a, a transdermal patch or a, a subcutaneous long-acting injection would be a value for a certain subset of patients uh, to be treated with chemotherapy. To summarize this section, the first major advancement came in the early 90s with the advent of the first 5-HT3 receptor antagonist on Dancitron. Along with that, we had now an array of other what we consider first-generation agents that are available. The second-generation Palinocitron that had added delayed effect and then in the early 2000s, we had the NK1s come to the market, and that now has formed the backbone of the three-drug combination that's considered standard of care for highly emetogenic and, in some cases, modern emetogenic chemotherapy. And again, I showed you a list of adjuvant agents that are either added for breakthrough or patients who have failed or patients who have anxiety or need other medication, along with the two- and three-drug regimens I had mentioned. I'd like to stop there and I'd like to thank you for your time today.